Welcome back, guys, to our minimalist run of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. Right now, we are on the final crystal dungeon, which is level 7, Turtle Rock. You have to use the red cane quite a bit throughout this dungeon to make these little red platforms that you use to ride along those rails. I'm gonna try to get that enemy. Alright. That right there is probably the sixth time I've ever killed an enemy with the red cane. <laughs> I never kill an enemy with the red cane. I hardly ever use it as a combat weapon. Actually, the only times I ever use the red cane at all is to uh, use it for what it's required for. I definitely use the blue cane more in this game, between the two canes anyway. Wait until you're lined up right here, then light those two torches, then light these two as you pass. That should give you more than enough time to pass through this door up here. What we're headed to get right now is a key. In this room, be careful of the roly polies. Go over to the sides of the room to keep yourself from being hurt. I really don't know what these things are called. I just call them roly polies. And uh, wait for that to come back. Hide over here. We're going to be making our way back to the little lobby ish type area here on this floor the big room to the left of here. Be sure to pick up these two pots over here because one of them has full magic. Alright, back to full health and full magic. Nice. Ride this uh, red platform over here to this door and then head in. Get the fire rod ready because it makes a pretty good combat weapon throughout this uh, dungeon against those things. There we go, got us another key. Be careful in this room of the weird chain chomp type enemies. They do quite a bit of damage. Four hearts if they hit you, so be careful. Push this block here and then hit that switch with a beam or some other projectile and then get the chest and hurry up and go downstairs. That room back there that I just completed took me a long time to figure out as a kid. But after I figured it out, it felt like it, the solution to that puzzle was just so obvious and right in front of my face, yet it took me so long to figure it out. Right in these little pipe type things. I don't really know what they are exactly. Kind of weird. Go into the first one right here. We're headed to get the big key right now. Head down in this room and... Uh, Hit the switch, get on the other side of the blue th little marks, and then hit it again. There we go. The little thing bouncing around drops a key for you. Go through this, and then you'll be at the chest with the big key. There we go. We won't be getting the treasure of this dungeon. The treasure of this dungeon is the uh, magic or the mirror shield. I almost got it the magic shield, but it's the mirror shield. Uh, but yeah, it's not a required item, and therefore we're not going to be getting it. We won't be getting the treasure of the next dungeon either, obviously, because it's not a required item. But we'll get to that whenever we get to that. Go back into this room over here, then enter the top one of these pipes. Then use the ether medallion in this room right here. Then crush both of those with your uh, hammer. Be careful of that weird thing shooting fireballs at you. There we go. Just head over here to the right. As soon as that's out of our way, we'll head up. Get bombs ready whenever uh, you can, because you'll need those. Got to bomb a wall in this next room. Bomb the north wall here to progress. Then use a projectile or something after you cross the little tan colored blocks to flip the switch so you can get the key. Then do that again to enter the door. This room down here is dark and you have to maneuver through quite a bit of fire sticks while you're riding on one of the cane platforms. Go down here, there's a switch to the right, right over here. Wait till the fire stick is pointing pretty much straight down, then hit the switch and uh, make your way for the door. Just follow the path that I'm following here. Head down here, take a right at the thing with a long rail on it. Then head left from here. If you take too long, the door will close again, I'm pretty sure. Just run straight down here. You'll run right through the Helmosaur. 
Okay, run straight down here again, get into a safe place, use a beam or something to knock that guy down. Position yourself right and you won't be hurt by the beam as you make your way over. Fall into the hole to respawn at the top of the room and then run back down. If you don't fall into the hole, then you'll probably be hit into the hole anyway by one of those little lasers. But yeah, let's bomb this wall and then uh, leave this uh, area. Use the magic mirror to go back to the light world and then you can get some health here. No matter what your health is, you can get back to full health in a minimalist run here in this cave. Just head up here, go down the stairs. There'll be two fairies here for you. We only need one, though. We don't have much more left with uh, Turtle Rock. And you'll want to be at full health at this point in the dungeon, trust me, because there won't be much health before the boss of the dungeon, and you'll want full health for the boss. But to uh, head straight up here, you'll want to get bombs ready whenever you can, because you'll need those in the next room. Well, you won't need them, but they'll help out. Whenever you enter here, shoot down immediately to hit the switch. Destroy the Helmosaur, walk up here. Place a bomb on that, walk over here, hit the switch with the projectile. The bomb will blow up and open up the path for you. Makes that area quick and easy. Head over here, use the cane. Be sure to use the cane before picking up any of the pots, because you will want full magic. I'd recommend getting the fire rod ready first. Alright, time for the most difficult battle in this entire quest. He has uh, a fire head and an ice head. Destroy the ice head first because uh, the fire doesn't stay around from the fire head. The ice stays around from the ice head though and it can be really annoying. Yeah, the boss also hurts. It does four hearts of damage per hit. So it can kill you in three hits, so be really careful. What I'd recommend doing after you've taken out the ice head, watch the boss's tail. If it moves really fast, get ready to dodge because he's getting ready to shoot his head at you. Don't shoot the ice rod at the fire head until it's stopped to get ready to shoot fire at you. Because uh, once it gets ready to shoot fire at you, it'll hold still and it'll be a for sure shot at uh, hitting it with the ice rod. If you try to hit it while it's moving, you might miss because the ice rod is kind of slow whenever you use it, so be sure to wait until you stop to get ready to shoot fire at you. And yeah, just uh, keep avoiding uh, the boss's head, the little rock head of it. That's the big issue here is avoiding that while waiting for the fire head to get ready to shoot at you. So yeah, just be careful, pay attention to the boss's tail, avoid the head and freeze the fire fire part of this boss whenever he gets ready to shoot fire at you. The fire head on this boss shouldn't have very much more left to it. There we go. Nice. Alright. The boss still isn't completely dead though. As soon as you defeat the ice and fire heads it'll uh, go through this little scene of sorts and then it'll come out like that. Don't fool around, don't goof around, don't mess around at all, because this boss will still hurt you quite a bit for four hearts of damage. Like that. I can't take another hit now, just be really careful and slash the uh, flashing part of its body. Do not let this boss kill you, because this, this is one irritating boss in a minimalist run. Minimalist run. Shouldn't have very much. There we go. Nice. Well, this boss is down and out. We can finally get our last crystal. There we go. That's the max amount of health we'll have throughout the rest of this uh, quest. Although we don't have very much more in this quest to do anymore. Let's see what the final maiden has to say. I appreciate your coming so far to rescue me, as I thought you are the legendary hero. I have felt this from the first time we met. Ganon is waiting inside of his tower to pass through the gate link in the two worlds. Once Ganon enters the light world, it is unlikely that anyone can stop him. But if he stays in the closed space of this world, you can find him wherever he runs. Now, go to the tower of Ganon. We will use our combined powers to break the barrier. Let's return peace to the country without fail. You understand? Yes. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. Alright. 
The most annoying boss in this entire run is now destroyed. I am quite happy. Our next destination is pretty much right by where we're at right now, just over here to the left a little bit. Be careful of the Lionels. At least I guess that's what they are here in this game. Just be careful of them because they can do quite a bit of damage. So just try to hurry up and get past them really quickly. Red, we are going to break the barrier of Ganon's tower with our power. Kind of like this cutscene for some reason. The crystals looked kind of neat as they were circling around and everything. Okay, probably the longest non-crystal dungeon in this game. First thing you have to do is head over here to the left and go downstairs. There are quite a bit of keys laying around, at least more than what you'll actually need to use. I'm going to try to get some of my health back. See if I can't get some. Nope. Might be some in the pots in this room. I know there's a key in this pot over here. Not sure about that other pot. think that there's nothing in it, though. Yep, nothing. Just kind of ride the conveyor around and pound the little moles in. And push the block either any of the directions, really, after you pounded two moles on the same sides or opposite side. You know what I mean. Use the hook shot to get around the holes in this room. Go down over here. All right. Hit the crystal switch and then put a bomb on it. There we go. Wait for that to blow up and then head down one room. Place a bomb next to the crystal switches over there on the left. Just magic. Still trying to get my health back. Got a key. Hit the crystal switch here. Head over to the right side of the room and then be careful as you make your way to that warp. There we go. There is a heart in this room right here. I did remember that. Careful of the little fire snakes or whatever they are. Maneuver around, push this block to the left. Dang it. Hookshot over there. Throughout this dungeon, you'll have to refight all of the bosses from the pendant dungeons. Still not that hard. Each of them has kind of a new thing in their battles, but you'll see that whenever we get to it. The treasure of this dungeon is the red mail, which is the strongest armor for Link. But since it isn't required, we won't be getting it, so, yeah. Alright, head to the right over here. Be careful of these weird things. You can either kill them or knock them into the hole. There we go. Be careful, make your way over here. Throw this pot. And then head to the right. Alright, in this room you're going to have to light a torch and then make your way uh, across the floor that it displays. You can make your way across the floor that it uh, displays while it isn't being displayed, so I could pretty much make it look like I'm walking on nothing, but uh, I'm going to make it uh, show up just so I can uh, see where I'm going. Whenever I was younger I used to just uh, use the ether medallion. Alright, just walk by him. You're going to have to bomb the floor in this next room. Bomb the floor in the lower right over here. Let's wait for that bouncing thing to get out of there. Shouldn't take very long, hopefully. There we go. Bomb the floor, then wait for it to blow up. Get what's in the chest, alright. And here's our first... Uh, rematch against one of the pendant bosses the statues from the eastern palace where we got the pendant of courage the new trick to this battle is the ice floor as you can see but that's not really much of an added challenge to be honest because most of the battle is just kind of standing still even whenever uh, you have to move around because of the red one it's still not hard there you go get the big key in this room, the arrows and the bombs. There we go. Alright. In the room to the left of where we, uh, this room right here where we had the rematch, uh, there will be a wall that you can destroy. Go ahead and do that. 
Because there are some fairies on the other side that you can get back your health with. There we go. Go up the stairs. Just ignore the treasure because it has an item we don't need, as I said before. Now that we have finished off on the lower part of the tower, we can now start actually climbing up. The tower gets a lot uh, shorter from here, or, or it takes a lot less time to beat from here. The longest part of the tower is getting the big key, in my opinion. Careful the weird guys that follow your movement in this room. And that thing bouncing around, of course. Okay. There we go. You shouldn't have to mess with the red one over there. There we go. Use this statue to block the little spike traps. So just pull it over here, pull it down some, and then get on the other side and push it down. Careful not to uh, make eye contact with the red ones, otherwise they'll shoot beams at you. Like that. Okay, trying to get this lined up a little better. There we go. In the next room, we have to destroy a couple of those with the uh, Beemoses shooting at us, which is even more annoying than spike traps. Just try to be careful here. There we go. Stupid Beemos. Let's get that heart and then make our way through here. And up we go. Just walk along the top up here and then hop down right here. Hit the switch. The middle pot has the switch you need for the door. Now just uh, head back down here, go up the stairs, and go through the door to the right. This floor also has an optional room that uh, has some fairies in it too if you need more health again. Took me a couple playthroughs to figure out how to get over there to that little hole after you bomb it. You gotta run into the blocks. Thing is, you can't just uh, look at the blocks and run. You have to look away from them, like to the sides, and then start running them, press up. There we go. I didn't really need that fairy, but whatever. I wanted to get everything in that room. This is probably the most annoying floor on this tower, to be honest. At least in my opinion. Mainly because we have a bunch of those gargoyle-type enemies uh, in rooms like this with conveyors and sometimes ice. This room is probably the, probably the second least annoying on this floor. You can just use the pots to destroy the Stalfoses. There we go. In the rooms with the little gargoyle type soldiers or whatever they are, I'd recommend using the ether medallion and then crushing them with the hammer. Be careful of the beamoses. Just kind of ride around, try not to get shot by them. So kind of keep on the move the best you can. Okay. There we go, nice. Oh my god, stupid Beemoses. Alright, now we have ice and conveyors. Just follow the same strategy that you did before. Freeze them and then crush them. There we go. Alright, go through the door, Link. I want that heart. No, Link. Okay, I'm not going back for that. And once again, just crush the little frozen enemy over here. Careful the fireballs and the lasers from the Beemos. Uh, let's get out of here. There we go. Right over this way, we have another rematch with one of the pendant bosses. The three worms from the second dungeon. I'd like to try and save some of my magic, so I'm going to fight a couple of them with just arrows and the sword. If you want, though, if you have silver arrows, which you won't if you're a minimalist or you shouldn't have them, uh, silver arrows can kill these things in one hit. So, yeah, you can use those. 
But uh, if you don't have silver arrows, you can use the fire rod this time around. It's a lot quicker and easier to use than the ice rod. And it still kills them in two hits. Dang it. I'm used to using the ice rod on these things, so I shot a little early on accident. We'll just take this one out with arrows and the sword. There we go. The only uh, thing that they changed in this rematch is adding that little thing that shoots fireballs at you. Which isn't that much of a new challenge, really. Let's get everything in these pots. There we go. You can use the ether medallion to show you the floor. See, so you know where to go. But for some reason it didn't show me the floor. Good thing I know where to go, though. Let's get that heart. There we go. Just run to the right in this room. Ha! <laughs> nice. The whiz robes are actually pretty good for giving hearts, so... Hopefully they'll give us some good hearts. There we go, we got one more heart. Hopefully we can get two more. Nope, just one more, but I'm fine with that. Run up here. I'm gonna try to kill off some more of these guards with uh, the sword to see if I can't get some hearts. There we go. Okay, I didn't mean to knock one of those guards off. Okay, we have absolutely no magic, but there should be some in these pots. There we go. I think that there's still one more tiny magic. I think it's in the bottom pot in this area. Yeah, it's in the bottom one over here. Okay, we're probably going to have to light these torches with the lamp. Maybe those soldiers came back in this room. No, I didn't think so. It's not worth it to try to freeze him and risk uh, not getting magic from him. We'll just light these torches with the lamp. There we go. We'll start with the one at the top and make our way around clockwise. There we go. Alright, hurry up, fire stick. There we go. We don't have a whole, whole lot left of this uh, tower. Hurry up and get up here to the top so you can avoid the lasers. Get that heart. Full magic. Run down, try to make it over to the ladder as quickly as you can. Link, come on. Ah, oh, Link. Whatever. Use the fire rod to light these torches. Be careful of the things orbiting the area. You can either use pots or arrows or a variety of things, really. You can, e you can even freeze those things with the ether medallion if you want and try to get your magic back. But uh, let's just head over here to the left. Get some bombs ready because you're going to have to throw them down there onto the conveyor. I threw that too far. There we go, now just run down, trigger that off, and then head through the hole. Okay. Wait for a good moment to hit that switch, there we go. Hit this switch over here. Ah, uh, stupid thing. Now's the time where I wish that I had a uh, magic powder so I could turn those bouncing things into fairies. There we go. Got it on the outside of the brown colored blocks. Alright. Now it's time for another rematch. The only thing that's really changed much about this one is the arena. Which in my opinion they made it easier this time around. If you fall down you'll be in a room with spikes on the floor and uh, whiz robes. So be careful not to fall down. For some reason, even with the Master Sword, this st thing still takes the same amount of hits, and that was close. Alright, there we go. Get the hook shot ready once he's done blowing up. There's 20 rubies in that chest. Head to the left here, pushing the blocks. On the next floor is the rematch with Aghanim. Just run. Get in, get in the stairs, Link. Go. In the stairs. Go, go, go. Oh, come on. You just had to let them get another hit in, didn't you, Link? Anyway, though, head over here and through the door. 
Ho, 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 it's great that you could come all the way here, Red. I'm very happy to see you again, but you better believe that we will not have a third meeting. Prepare to meet your doom. Like, oh no, there's three of you now. Actually, well, this battle I don't really think is easier, but it's easier to get damage in on Aghanim, I think, anyway. If you're lucky, you can uh, get like three fireballs in a row. Be sure that you uh, still keep on the move, though, so you can dodge the little twirling blue fireballs. And, of course, be sure to hit the normal fireballs, the bigger ones, back at Aghanim, the real one, because if you hit it back at one of the fake ones, it isn't going to do anything to him. But this was a pretty fun rematch against Aghanim, I think, anyway. I thought that it was really cool that he split into three whenever I was younger and I did my first run of this game. There we go, Aghanim is now down and out. We won't be seeing any more of him this run. But look who it is. It's Batman. No, seriously though. Ganon flies away and then our duck somehow made it here to the dark world. There we go. We'll have to recover our health and magic here pretty soon, but we'll do that later. Well, that is it for this part.